Okay, we're looking at 7.5, reasoning about properties of polygons. Uh, our goal is to learn about the properties of triangles and quadrilaterals. There's a couple definitions. <coughs> In this section, there's not a lot of example questions, uh, but there's just a lot of uh, definitions and kind of an understanding. We're going to build an understanding, and then I believe the questions are fairly, uh, fairly easy and fairly straightforward. So the first definition is a centroid. It's the center of an object's mass. The point at which it balances also knows as the center of gravity. So a, a centroid, this is, as you can imagine, kind of a, a little pin on a, a balancing. If you were to place this object directly on the pin, so I've kind of drawn it in 3D, but you want to imagine that that object uh, is actually balancing perfectly flat on top of that pin. So if you, if you can imagine my hand, or let's use the textbook as an example, uh, if I don't, if I'm not exactly on the centroid of that object, then the book's going to fall. Okay. Similarly, how you would spin a basketball, uh, the person that spins that basketball, they're spinning the basketball directly on its centroid. Okay. So that's a 3D shape. We're talking about a 2D sheet, a piece of paper. If this was stiff enough and I wanted it to remain on my finger, I would have to put my finger directly on the centroid, or in the middle, right, the center, the center of balance. So they also call it. Uh, the center of gravity. The reason they call it the center of gravity is because uh, gravity is what, what takes it off your finger, right? Pulls it off. We're at the center of gravity, it'll stay there. Okay. Any questions about that? What the uh, centroid is? Okay. So we're going to learn about how to find the centroid of different shapes today. The next definition we're going to learn about is the bimedian. It's the line joining the midpoints of two opposite sides in a quadrilateral. Okay, so I drew kind of a rectangle here. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. Uh, it can be any quadrilateral. Remember quadrilateral, quad, meaning four sides. So the line joining the midpoints, two opposite sides. So this side, there's a midpoint. This side, here's a midpoint. We know they're midpoints because these two sides are equal. And this right here, this is called by medium. Okay, that line. All right. And in a quadrilateral, the centroid, you actually find it, you find it where the two by medians cross. So again, what makes this a by medium is that it's joining these two points, which are midpoints. Okay, and then that would be then the centroid. So hopefully a very clear example there of both what a bimedian is and a centroid. All right, moving on to triangles. Anybody remember what a, a median is in reference to a triangle? Kevin. A line uh, connecting one vertex to the opposite midpoint. Good, exactly. That's perfect. perfect definition. So it's a line from any vertex. If here's my triangle, A, B, C, vertex B, as Kevin told me that it would be from the vertex, sorry, medium B would be from the vertex B to the opposite side midpoint. Okay, so this is called a, a median. So you, you can tell a bimedian in a quadrilateral and a median in a triangle are very similar in that regard. Okay, they're joining midpoints. One is joining a midpoint to another midpoint. The other is joining a vertex, or a corner of a triangle, to a midpoint, okay? So the centroid of a triangle is located at the intersection of its medians. So the intersection of its medians, where would that point be? Mark, how can I find that? There's one median. How can I draw another median? Uh, by connecting the two midpoints. Connecting these two midpoints? Uh, the opposite midpoint. No, this is not a vertex, it's called, or not a midpoint, it's called what? It's, uh, it's up there somewhere. Vertex. Vertex, good, yeah, so joining the opposite vertex to the midpoint. Okay, and if you've drawn it correctly, you'll notice they all cross in the same spot. If they're not, then you probably don't have these sides equal. Okay, this is actually drawn off, I can see that this side is longer than this side, so this vertex is drawn incorrectly. It should actually be a little bit more over here, like that. Okay? Let's try that again. That one's a little messy. Draw it a bit bigger. 
Okay, so I'm gonna, the key to the beginning is, is finding the midpoint. You wanna get right in the middle. Now I can draw my, my medians. Okay, so this would be your median, and this would be your central. Okay, so we've learned how to find it for, for triangles, and we've learned how to find it for quadrilaterals. That doesn't matter any to any shape of triangle, okay? Even uh, obtuse triangles. The centroid of a quadrilateral is located at the intersection of its bimedians. Bimedians are lines joining the midpoints of opposite sides. They are the diagonals of the parallelogram formed by the mid-segments of the quadrilateral. Okay, that's a lot to take in. We have gone over it, though. Uh, this part, what a bimedian is. It's a line joining the midpoints. Now that second part says there are the diagonals of the parallelogram formed by the mid-segments. So what that's referring to is if I form, join the midpoints, okay, so there's my parallelogram, okay, which we learned in the previous section. Okay, What it's saying is that they're the diagonals of that parallelogram. Okay? So this is the parallelogram here. All right, so for this section, to do your homework, you need to know you can determine the centroid of some quadrilaterals by locating the point of intersection of their diagonals. So one of the first questions of the homework is it gives you a chart and you have to explain how you would find the centroid for the given shape. So we know uh, locating the point of intersection of their diagonals works for squares, rectangles, rhombuses, and parallelograms. So if I have a square, a rectangle, a rhombus of any sort, or a parallelogram. Rhombus is kind of a combination of parallelogram and square. Remember, they're just all four sides are the same in a rhombus. So this could actually be considered a rhombus. So it's saying we can determine a centroid by locating the point of intersection of their diagonals. So we just run the diagonals now. And we got our centroid. We got our centroid. And a centroid, and a centroid. Okay, that's easy enough. It says, but uh, not for trapezoids and kites. So if we draw a trapezoid now, that's not necessarily going to be my centroid. Okay, so here is not centroid. Let's see if I can illustrate that with a much stranger trapezoid. You can see that that is nowhere near the center. Yep. Sir, find find center of that near find the bimedians or. Yeah, you're gonna find out. I do that. Yeah. Let's see. Bimedians, we join here and here, here and here, and you're right. And that's how you find a centroid. Yeah, so that comes from, from over here, right? The centroid of a quadrilateral is located at the intersection of the bimedians. Okay? And that works and so for that's some of them, right? The other ones you can use diagonals. Right. Yeah. So, so if we do bimedians on these ones too, you'll notice yeah. that they also give you the centroid. Okay? So wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it just be safe to just use the bimedians? Yes. Because all of them. That's right, yeah. But it, the process is a little longer, right? You have to find the midpoints first. Whereas this, if you know these shapes, mm -hmm. you can just join them, the, uh, the corners, then that's easier. 
You also need to know this, okay, for the, for the, the diagonals. You, you need to know that you can find it this way for these shapes, and you can't find it this way for these shapes, the other one being a kite, okay? You can't join uh, these and assume that's the centroid. So I can do a much stranger kite. This is not, not necessarily going to be the centroid. It's going to be the midpoint of here, and the midpoint of here, midpoint of here, midpoint of here. Okay? So this is centroid. I'll put it back in brackets, joined by medians. Or intersection of by medians. And this is not the same choice. And this is for kite. And this is for trapezoid. So just back to your point, Michael, it's good to know that for all quadrilaterals, you can connect the bimedians and find the intersection point and say that's the centroid, but at the same time you also need to know that for these particular shapes, you can join the diagonals, okay? You can find it the same way. And lastly, the bimedium of a non-base sides of a trapezoid is parallel to its bases. Its length is the mean of their lengths, okay? So the length of this line segment here is the length of the, the average or the mean of these two lengths. So you take this length, add it to this length, and divide by two, and you'll get that, that middle length. Okay? And you're going to need that in problems where they give you one dimension and they ask you to find out another. You're going to need to know this relationship between the sides. All right? Any questions there? Pretty straightforward section, I think. Homework shouldn't be too bad. So, so Michael, they always give you the length for They'll give you one of the lengths. They might give you EF and ask you to find AB. Then you've got to use your algebra to rearrange this formula to solve for AB, right? You know how to do that? Yeah. We'll multiply both sides by 2, cross out the denominator, move the, the CD over. Okay? Alright, that's the end of the lesson.